Hi, I'm Tara. And I'm Gabby. And I'm Carrie. And I'm Sarah. And we will be talking about the internal and external anatomy of the chicken. First, let's examine the external anatomy, the parts that can be seen from the outside. The skin below the opening of the ear is modified to form an earlobe. Did you know? The color of the earlobe is highly correlated with the color of the eggs a hen lays. Species can be differentiated by the appearances of the combs and wattles, structures that are likely to serve in an ornamental role. The size and color are dependent upon sex hormones. The most characteristic feature of birds is their feathers. Feathers are composed of keratin and they shield the skin from damage while providing insulation from extreme temperature variations. Did you know? Hens molt or lose their feathers when egg production ceases? Molting follows a pattern on the bird's body, head, neck, body, wings, and tail. Birds don't have teeth to grind their food. Birds have triangle-shaped tongues with very few taste buds. Chickens can secrete oil that can be distributed through the feathers during preening. The oil comes from the uropygeal gland, a large bilobed sebaceous gland located dorsally at the base of the tail. Now let's take a look at the muscles. There are three important muscles in the wing, the biceps brachii, the triceps brachii, and the deltoideus. The biceps brachii is a two-headed muscle that flexes the wing. It runs ventral to the humerus, originating near the shoulder and inserting at the proximal anterior surface of the radius. The three-headed muscle, the triceps brachii, originates at the scapula and the proximal humerus. Its insertion is the olecranon process of the proximal ulna. This muscle serves to flex the shoulder and extend the forearm. The deltoideus covers the dorsal shoulder. It originates at the proximal clavicle and inserts at the proximal humerus. Contraction flexes the shoulder and rotates the wing outward. In the breast, there are two major muscles, the superficial pectoral and the supracoracoideus. Did you know? The superficial pectoral is the largest muscle of the bird and contributes most of the force needed for moving the wing down. Did you know? The coracoideus allows birds to elevate their wings. Both the supracoracoideus and the superficial pectoral originate at the sternum, furcula, and the true ribs. They insert at different points on the humerus. The legs have several muscles. The gluteus maximus and the sartorius flex the hip and extend the knee. Many muscles assist in extending the thighs, such as the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, quadriceps femoris, the adductor longus. The muscle that originates at the ilium and pubis and inserts at the proximal tibiotarsus is the ambiens. The gastrocnemius has three heads, which originate from the distal femur and proximal tibiotarsus. It serves to flex the knee and extend the foot. Did you know? The muscle responsible for flexing the tarsometatarsus is the tibialis anterior? These muscles need oxygen to work. The oxygen comes from the gaseous exchange that happens in the respiratory system. Birds have air sacs, thin walled extensions of the lungs, which allow for air to continuously pass through the tissues in one direction. Did you know there are a total of 10 air sacs? Two pairs of air sacs are found in the cranial thorax, two pairs are found in the caudal thorax, and one pair is found dorsolateral to the intestines. Birds don't have a diaphragm. The intercostal muscles are the major respiratory muscles. Exhaling occurs when the abdominal muscles contract. The glottis is the opening to the trachea, which branches into two primary bronchi. Did you know? The cartilage at the point where the trachea branches into the bronchi is called the syrinx. It's responsible for producing bird sounds. 
The digestive system is important to ensure that all organisms obtain all the nutrients they need to sustain life. Let's take a look. The mouth lacks both lips and teeth. The beak, as seen in the picture, is used to hold and tear food. Although it lacks taste buds and is not very muscular, the narrow triangular tongue has many touch receptors. This allows birds to distinguish food by feel. Food is transported through a muscular tube called the esophagus. It runs dorsal to the trachea. Birds have temporary food storage organs called crops. The food is later digested in the proventriculus, the glandular stomach. Did you know the proventriculus secretes hydrochloric acid, peptic enzymes, and mucus? These all assist in digestion. The interior of the gizzard, an extremely muscular organ used to crush food, is like sandpaper. This helps the bird break down food chunks into a finer paste. After being broken down, food passes into the small intestine. There are three parts to the small intestine, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The small intestine functions primarily to absorb nutrients. It's attached to the abdominal wall by the mesentery, which also holds the superior and inferior mesenteric arteries and veins. The pancreas can be found in the loop of the duodenum. The liver is a large, four-lobed gland that secretes bile. Bile is stored in the gall gallbladder and is later released to assist with the digestion of lipids. Bacterial breakdown of plant material occurs in the intestinal seca. This is also one of the locations of water reabsorption. The last place along the digestive tract for water to be reabsorbed is the large intestine. Finally, feces are extruded from the body through the cloaca and the vent. Did you know the exit for the urogenital system is also through the cloaca? The function of the urogenital system is to remove nitrogenous and metabolic wastes and to maintain the fluid balance in the body. Birds do this through excreting insoluble urates, which require little water to produce. The kidneys each have three lobes and are found in the dorsal cavity of the abdomen and filter wastes to be removed from the body. The ureters are tubules that connect the kidneys with the cloaca. They run parallel to the abdominal aorta. Adrenals are endocrine glands that are found near the dorsal anterior aspect of the kidneys. The circulatory system is vital for the maintenance of homeostasis as it helps transport nutrients and oxygen throughout the body. Birds have four chambers in their hearts, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The right atrium and the left ventricle can be seen in this picture. The heart is surrounded by the pericardial sac, which has two layers, the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. Within the pericardial sac is the pericardial fluid that is used as lubrication. In birds, the aorta is reflected towards the right. This is in contrast to mammals whose aortas reflect towards the left. Did you know the heart rate ranges from 200 to 300 beats per minute in the chicken? This is even higher in smaller bird species. Last, but certainly not least, let's cover the reproductive system. In most female chickens, only the left ovary and oviduct develop beyond the embryonic stage. The ovary can be found in the left side of the abdomen. When a hen is laying, the follicles will appear yogi. If a hen is immature or out of lay, the follicles will be small and red. The ovulation order of the follicles can be determined by their size. The largest, F1, will be the next to ovulate. This is followed by F2, the next largest follicle. Small yellow follicles will continue to grow. They replace the large yellow follicles that ovulate. The small white follicles replace the small yellow follicles. Did you know the nonvascular area on the follicle that is the site of the follicular rupture during ovulation is called the stigma? Post-ovulatory follicles are the structures that remain after ovulation occurs.
The oocyte travels to the infundibulum after ovulation. This is also a location for sperm storage. It next reaches the magnum, a thick-walled region that secretes albumin and other proteins. After remaining in the magnum for about two hours, the oocyte reaches the isthmus, where it remains for another two hours as the egg membrane is formed. Next, the egg enters the uterus, where it remains for about 20 hours. During this time, the shell is formed and pigmented. Finally, the egg travels through the vagina before it is released through the cloaca. Sperm are also stored in the tubal glands, which are located between the uterus and the vagina. The male reproductive system is much simpler, as the seminal vesicles and prostate are not present. The phallus is small. There are lymph glands associated with it that produce fluid, which is added to the semen. The testes are organs responsible for the production of sperm. In order to exit the body, the sperm travel through the vast deferens. We've now completed an overview of the general anatomy of the Gallus Gallus domesticus. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time! Did you know? This video was created by Sarah Wright, Carrie McCann, Gabby Hamill, and Tara Bergstrom. The chicken! <laughs> <laughs>